Eric Six here, back for another Transformers review. And today, we're going to be taking a look at the BTS Toys uh, BTS 04 Sonicron. In other words, a third party sound wave. Now, this has gotten a lot of bad reviews online, and I can see the complaints, and I actually wasn't going to pick it up. In fact, I was going to do the Dr. Crank review today, but I decided since, uh, well, I picked this guy up on the Black Friday sale BBTS had. And uh, they put them back on clearance now for the same price, which is uh, $30. And uh, for 30 bucks, I really couldn't complain, and so I decided I would pick them up. Anyway, I figured I would do this while he's still available on BBTS, see if you guys want to make your own decisions whether you want them or not. Personally, I'm a lot more satisfied with him than uh, I was just by watching all the other reviews, but he takes some work. Now, the front box here, it comes in a pretty nice box. It's a little bit thin. It's not as uh, high grade of a box as some uh, third party releases, but you do get some really nice artwork. And inside, you have Sonicron himself. Now, this one is actually a second one I have uh, that's going to my friend overseas, um, but I'm just using it for this review. And then on the side, you have the alt mode and then uh, just some stats there. It's funny that his speed is a 3, because I would think that as a cassette recorder your speed is, you know, 0. Now on the back, what's interesting is they give you these cutouts here, uh, which look like laser beak and ravage, and you basically can cut them out, you can fold them up, tape them together, and they'll fit inside his chest in case you don't have any cassette tapes. Now while we're on the subject of cassette tapes, it's worth noting that not all G1 cassette tapes fit in very well. For instance, I can get laser beak in, but I can't get the door to close. This is a knockoff laser beak too, and uh, yeah, this doesn't fit at all because the tolerances are just a little bit wider. On the other hand, the Ravage tape fits great inside there. Um, so I didn't have any problems with that, but then Frenzy and Rumble, or Rumble and Frenzy, whichever one you call who, I couldn't get them to fit in at all so it kind of varies and uh, actually for this very reason I'm kind of tempted to pre-order the Frenzy and Rumble made by BTS Toys just because they're supposed to fit in the chest of Sonicron. Now here's Sonicron himself. He does come with an alternate head which is more of a movie style head. Uh, I'll take some pictures and put it uh, at the end of this video. I really don't like that head. Um, this one is probably the closest to his generation 1 type aesthetic there. And it's not bad, it's a pretty decent representation. The eyes are a little bit small. Now, the big problem I had with this toy when I got him from out of the box is that a lot of stuff is really floppy, and I mean more floppy than this. So if you want this toy, you have to really be prepared to take everything apart and do some nail polish on like little joints just to stiffen things up like before it was that his arm would just flop over so you had to pull out the ball joint add a little bit of uh, I'm not sure if you can see that add a little bit of nail polish onto the ball joint let it dry and I did that for both arms and that really increased his ability to uh, hold a couple poses he's not the most poseable guy his legs are the worst defender and uh, I think I still have to go back and fix up this swivel here because you can see it's just a real easy swivel. But uh, the hips used to be awful. I did them and I did the lower knee which used to flop around making it difficult to get any good posing out of them. But he is a pretty decent figure for $30, not for full price by any means. He does have some pretty cool accessories, um, as you see he's got his gun here and this actually becomes the speaker of his uh, alt mode and it just pops off in here you got the shoulder cannon that the G1 version had and that's also pretty nice um, I do wish there was a little more front detailing on here because the red makes it hard to see any details and this is where I have some problems with these toys now to get these out you can see the little tab here when these go in, if they fold all the way in, there's no way you're getting them out without a screwdriver or something else. And that's my biggest complaint with this toy. 
Now on the back, I choose to store it like this when it's not in use, um, just so it's not not uh, obtrusive anywhere. But what you got here is something that you can just, it's just on a peg, just like everything else. You can flip it around in the hole. You can actually give him a second rocket launcher and they have little slide out things here to slide it out. And I really like this particular little rocket launcher. Also on his legs, you've got these little doors which you can open up. And on little 3mm clips, you've got some speakers. Now these speakers don't really do too much for me. Um, as you can see, they're kind of floppy. But I could put some you know, nail polish on the 3mm clip ports just to make them stand. And there's one for each side, but frankly I don't really care much for the speakers. So they can just stay where they are as little extras. In terms of articulation, if we get this, you have a ball jointed head, which really is only good for rotation because of how his head is held on. You can't get any up and down. You do have a shoulder joint, it's on a ball joint, goes all the way around. You have an upper uh, arm swivel and you have an elbow, which is a bit limited just because of the interaction between the material and the elbow. The fist joint is just on a swivel here. And you can see he is still a little bit floppy. He's not, he's not, you know, without flaw. So keep that in mind on this review. But for $30, he's totally worth it. Um, you know, same thing on the other side. You do have um, this hip swivel. Well, I tried to demonstrate it and the knee's moving. And it kind of can go in and out so you can kind of get a little bit of various posing. Doesn't really do too much, I guess. You do have an upper thigh. You do have this strange swivel right here, which I'm not sure if that's what they're intending to be his knee. But then you also have this lower swivel down here. So I'm not sure which one they're intending. But because of the upper thigh swivel and the waist, you can kind of do a couple things with his feet. And the, yeah, get this out of the way. The thigh here is on a ball joint, so you can, you know, give him a kicking pose if you can have him pose that way and also he does have the little red button that pops open his chest now I'm trying to figure out a way to make this clip in a bit more solidly because sometimes this likes to pop on open pretty easily now just to show you let me take this gun out of the way here here is our G1 Ravage and we can just take him and we can slide him on in and you see now he's got a tape now with some of the other ones I can get them in for instance laser beak and uh, frenzy and rumble but when I try to close it it just won't close ravage has been the only one I've really had success with um, I have not tried rat bat who is the only other besides laser beak frenzy and rumble that I, I have but whatever ravage works the it's of note though that the new Ravage, um, the one that came with Hound, does not because he's far too thick. So don't even try it with him. Do not pay full price for this guy. He'll be ripped off. If you want to compare him to Music Label, there is a the difference. The big thing between these two is the size difference. Um, hands down, without a doubt, Music Label is the better sound wave. 100% better. But he's a little bit small. And Music Label Soundwave is a lot more expensive than the $30 that he is asking. If we put him next to his G1 counterpart, you can see that they're almost the same size. Which works out nice in Sonicron's favor when you stick him with someone like, say, the classic Voyager Megatron. Because now Megatron is still taller than Soundwave, but he's not so small like this one just feels really really small for Soundwave compared to Megatron so there is an advantage in that corner for the BTS toys ones Oops. if you're wondering this is a it's the newer Japanese uh, I can't remember United I think is the line that they called it Megatron and I just 
sawed off his uh, wings because he looks much better on a shelf without them. And unfortunately, this Megatron shows how dated this mold actually is by how few ratchet teeth he's got in his legs, making his legs rather difficult to do anything interesting with. So let's just keep him right here for now. And let's get a couple other sound wave minions in here. Here are the perfect effect frenzy and rumble. And I'll lower this. And you can call whoever you want Frenzy and whoever you want Rumble. I prefer Frenzy Rumble. Just because most toys are designated that way. But uh, it's up to you. No arguments over that here. So there's the perfect effect guys. We can also add in the Ravage that came with Hound. Now the perfect effect birds, they're not as interesting to me as uh as they could be they're a little bit big for my taste so we just have to sub in the old laser beak i don't unfortunately have the uh i'm gonna have to adjust this like i don't unfortunately have the cybertron sound wave anymore okay there we go after what seems like a while of messing around off camera I finally got him to stand and hold laser beak, which is I just like how that looks with all the little minions hanging around. Okay, so to get him to his alt mode, first what we want to do is take his accessories off, as you would imagine, and pull out that little silver thing, and just kind of fold that in together, and then just kind of clip these together. They don't stay terribly tight, but that's okay. They'll be okay once we get him inside the toy. This arm piece here, by the way, is removable. It just plugs on in, but it looks weird when he doesn't have that on, so just keep it on. And just kind of pull on the little yellow thing a little, and you'll see that he has a nice little storage for uh, his little silver gun thing that hides away nicely. And take this off his back for now. Um, officially, what you're supposed to do here is take this and... Again, as you can see, this is one of those cases where I have no fingernails, so I can't get this thing out, which is my biggest gripe. So, I'll use this earring of my wife's that just happens to be lying around. Open that up, flip it around, and close it. And then you can take this and fold this in in a way, but I really don't know why you would want to, because there's no real place to store this. So I just leave it like that, because I'll show you how I store it. And you'll notice it looks like a 9 volt battery. Uh, that's exactly what it's intended to be. And there's just no place to put it, which kind of stinks. Alright, so let's get on to transforming this guy here. Now, what we'll start with here is his arms. And you have to kind of pull on these little side tabs. And sometimes you can do it just by kind of pushing on the fist. And you'll swing open this door here. Just rotate his fist on in and close it back up. Same thing for the other side, except it's a slightly different door. And again, I'll push on the fist to open it. Swing it in, push it closed. And finally, his head. Uh, this back panel here opens. And it's tough to do. Again, tolerances on this guy are where probably the biggest complaint just because they make things tough to open and close and they make things, you know, wiggle around too much. And I'm going to have to go back and give a little more of the nail polish trick to some of these pieces just to keep them a little less fl uh, flimsy. But again, I still think he's worth the uh, low price he was right now. So we got that, we got a headless sound wave. You can also take his arms and just kind of telescope them on in. And we'll just leave it like that for now. Now we'll come down to this piece. And this is probably most people's biggest complaint is the butt flap here. And it's really not as big of a deal in person as it is uh, in pictures. It is fairly large, but he's not taking up so much real estate if you put some things on the back to mask it and stuff. It's not that big a deal. When he's standing on a shelf, you don't see it at all. 
Okay, so from here, let's get on to his legs. And what you're gonna do, you gotta open this up, and you're gonna swing his feet on in. Now this panel always seems to pop up off on me. It's just a little slotted connector that holds in. Now you have to move his little heel spur on in. And then this will all kind of clamp down together and fold that closed. Now I did have to do a little adjusting on this hole because it was not uh, big enough to actually slide that in. So that's something to keep aware of uh, when you get this toy. Get yet another thing, again, if you want this, you have to be able to do some work to it to make it work out nice. Um, take this whole assembly and pop it out and rotate it to the side. Now what you're gonna do, take his legs and fold it so they're facing that way. And then do that for both sides here and clamp them on together. So once you have them just like this, the instructions say push down and that doesn't do anything. What you actually want to do is take this assembly, kind of bend at these top knees, fold this back on into itself and then just from there you can push everything down and you'll see all this gray, this gray bit here and all the leg pieces have folded into the top here. And this may pop out this uh, upper, these side pieces I should say, um, just because of how it fits in, so you may have to clip it back closed. Now, you may have already in the process uh, slid his chest piece here on in. If you haven't, just slide it on in. You can keep this tab. This tab really does nothing, so just fold it up against there. Okay, so once you have this all pegged together like this, what you're going to do is take this arm assembly and kind of pull it upwards. Um, you'll see that piece. Now, you're not going to pull it all the way up because you need to have a little bit of room to put this tab into that side hole there of Sonicron. And now you can just kind of pull it up all the way, and that'll lock this piece on the side here. Now you take this piece, flip it around and you can see that the piece that you popped up will mate right with the top here and usually when you put it in you'll end up knocking this out of the way so push it back up and this is kind of the problem when these pieces come together it tends to uh, kind of pop open this chest piece. Uh, he does have kind of a working button. It's more like you're bending the plastic a little and then it happens to make contact. So once you got that you're pretty much done. You just take the remainder here, the legs, and you just kind of plug them on in. And you see you have a pretty solid uh, cassette. You just take the two guns we took off at the very beginning you slide it in to make the microphone and there you go you got a nice looking little mini cassette player and to me this is probably the one thing that really makes this uh, Sonicron worth the $30 I mean through all the floppiness and everything like this this is an awesome alt mode I mean if you wanted Soundwave to be a cassette recorder uh, and not you know an mp3 player this is the way to do it uh, he's a nice micro cassette still makes sense, they're still used to an extent. Um, yeah, everything, he's just solid, he's not floppy at all anymore, well, aside from these stupid little speakers that open up. And uh, it's pretty great, it's a good representation of, of Soundwave as a modernized cassette recorder. Um, as modern as you can go before you move into, you know, digital recorders and stuff. Now. I told you that there was real no place for this battery. What I just usually do, just kind of put it on the back here. And that just gives it a nice place to store it. So, for size comparison purposes, here he is next to the Generation 1 sound wave and the music label sound wave. So you can see again, he's still right in the middle. He's a pretty hefty recorder though. And I really like it. I don't know if I can stress that enough. Um, through all the flap and everything, it's worth it. 
now he is kind of a little bit dumb. Uh, the instructions do tell one more thing, which is really stupid. I gotta be honest. They tell you to take this missile assembly and then you can take it and kind of plug it into the top here, which isn't a very solid connection. But plug it in like that. Okay? Following me? Now take this and flip it like that. And take this and flip it like that. And what do you see? Do you see a submarine? <laughs> because that's exactly what the instructions say this is. This is his third mode, which is his submarine mode. And that's just kind of ridiculous looking. So let's pretend that the instructions didn't even say that. And you never saw this. We'll leave that out of your mind and just love it for the micro cassette quarter recorder it is because it's awesome. Alright guys, this is T2RX6. I've jumped cut enough and this has gone on long enough. I will see you guys next time. You know what? That's a lie. It hasn't gone on long enough. There was one more thing I wanted to point out. These buttons that all look like they do stuff, um, they don't. Like this mic switch doesn't move. It's just really nicely painted. Each one of these buttons looks like they could be pressed or that there would be some kind of light piping in them but there's not, which is kind of unfortunate because it would be really cool to get some of these lights to light up. Other than that, like none of the switches, this uh, fast playback and I'm not sure what VOR stands for, those don't move or anything like that. So, that is all. Now, that's good enough. I'll see you guys next time.